Okay, I think we'll get started. The, uh, the clock is a little fast, so it's not really five after. Just a minute off now. Uh, so thanks for coming out. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, Dr. Shua Wang, who's a postdoc for the at Boston Children's Hospital and at uh, Harvard Medical School. We're doing the lab at the Jessica Zidane. Dr. Wang did his uh, master's degree at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Shanghai. Uh, and did a lot of very elegant uh, work there. And then went on to do his PhD at the University of Central Florida with Kevin Belfield, who uh, worked in chemistry and photochemistry in particular. A uh, very elegant dissertation, resulting in 10 publications for his PhD, uh, including uh, a number of uh, publications in very important journals, such as the American Chemical Society, Biomaterials, Biomicromolecules, and the ACS Applied Materials and Materials. Uh, during that time, um, his work as a PhD student, he developed some powerful biotechnology nanoprobes for a single two photon fluorescence bioimaging. Uh, and these had very high quantum yields and very stable in physiological systems, so they really added very much uh, to the field. It wasn't just the popular, but these were important studies. Uh, developed very efficient probes for targeting tumors with particularly polar receptors to find insight for these with encapsulated silicon nanoparticles. And then he also went on to develop in his PhD work uh, two photon novel selected for lysosomes, very powerful for cancer and biological studies. And just to top it off, the both was ink ion uh, sensing for the control as well. So a really great run there. Uh, for his postdoctoral work uh, that he's uh, working on now, um, he also has been very productive. He's had about uh, five or so publications, including a very elegant paper himself, recently a couple papers in neuron nature and experimental science. Uh, and that work has taken two, uh, two areas of its focus. associated virus delivery system to co-express soluble factors like insulin, uh, uh, like growth factor one, for example, has to become in cortical realms uh, and can get really robust cortical spinal growth uh, and behavioral change as well. One of the things about this work that I found particularly attractive, if you follow this field of uh, growth and reorganization, you often have in young animals a response uh, to these growth factors. He's gone on, and I'm sure you hear about this, and I've gone on to his work uh, in the uh, cortex and using vivo imaging device uh, to show sequential action of topographically ordered functional ensemble for skilled coordinate coordinate retrieval. And again, this work with being technically elegant, I think, is also important because of this challenge of dog. For those of you that are studying neuroscience and graduate students, Introduction. Everybody can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as uh, as this, as I said, um, I'm a postdoc in Dr. Chigong his lab studying the spinal injury, and my research has mainly focused on the function of cortical spinal system and also development treatment strategy to repair the damaged cortical spinal system. And uh, as we know, that more than uh, 200,000 people in the world suffer spinal cord injury every year. How it, the majority of this spinal cord injury is due to the sport or road traffic accidents. And uh, uh, that's a very famous case in the field. It's, uh, Chris, uh, Superman Crystal uh, Trophy. Uh, uh, in uh, 1995, he got a uh, horse road accident, and then he got uh, paralyzed from neck down. And uh, after uh, three years, he set up this uh, Crystal uh, Reeve Foundation to support uh, spinal cord injuries uh, research. After suffering this uh, paralyzed for almost uh, about uh, eight years, he passed away in 2004. 
But you can imagine that uh, thousands of people in the world every year they suffer in this uh, paralysis, uh, but uh, they require any uh, treatment, but uh, we don't have a uh, cure for that yet. So that's why I want to study the spinal cord injury. And uh, as we know, our brain controls our body's movement through the descending tracts in the spinal cord. And the, the interruption of these long descending axons in the spinal cord due to the spinal cord injury, they will uh, result in the functional deficits. And the cortical spinal tract is one of those descending tracts. And they play a very important role in the uh, voluntary movements. Uh, because uh, the cortical neurons in the cortex, they send the direct axon uh, output into the spinal cord and uh, send out the direct comment to control the, our body's voluntary movement. And uh, in this uh, uh, pathway, it's very important for the voluntary movement and the uh, functional deficits uh, due to stroke or spinal cord in injury are mainly uh, uh, contributed to the damage uh, by the, this damage of this uh, descending tract. So that's why I want to study this uh, cortical spinal system. So my uh, research actually uh, can be divided into two parts. The first part we try to uh, develop a uh, treatment strategies to uh, promote the cortical spinal axon regeneration and the risk to loss functions uh, in a lateral hemisystem model. And uh, after that work in the uh, parallel, I also work with my uh, colleagues to work on the function of cortical spinal system in the volume skilled uh, model control. And uh, in the end, I will talk about my future plan or direction. As I mentioned previously, the cortical spinal axons, they do not have the ability to regrow uh, 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 automatically. So one of the reasons is because the intrinsic factors the injured axons do not have the ability to regress uh, because they do not have the energy to regenerate. And second, because of the inhibitor environment in the scar uh, or scar formation in the uh, injury site, the axons do not have the ability to cross the injury site to reach the target in the corridor to the injury site. So our lab has mainly focused on the intrinsic uh, factors, actually. And I know some people in, the, in this department is also working in the inhibitor environment uh, part, for example, the inhibitor uh, group, uh, the factors, and also some molecules are very interesting in that. And uh, in our lab, <coughs> back to about uh, uh, eight years ago, Kai in our lab found the uh, P10 deletion of cortical spinal neurons can increase the intrinsic regrowth ability of the cortical neurons in the cortex and uh, promote the axon regeneration after uh, following a T8 completely. A crush model. As we can see here, the, the, a lot of axons uh, grow uh, across the injury site. And here is the first example showed that the cortical spinal neurons do have the ability to regrowth. For, uh, previously, people found this uh, axon after injury, they normally die back instead of regrowth. But uh, here we show that the first time that they do uh, can re regenerate. However, his pioneer study has also with uh, several uh, challenges. The first one is uh, because P10 is a uh, tumor suppressor. From the therapeutic perspective, it's not an ideal target, right? So an uh, alternative uh, uh, way to mimic the P10 uh, effect is very important. And second, uh, in his study, he didn't see any functional uh, recovery. So maybe other injury model may be required uh, to uh, study the CRT-dependent function. For the talk about the first uh, challenge, actually, we know that the P10 promotes uh, axon regeneration through activating the uh, PI3K and mTOR pathway. So this funding led us to think why not use the neurotrophin or growth factor directly to promote regeneration through activating the same pathway. So uh, as we know, there are growth factors actually in the previous report uh, uh, claim that the IGF can only enhance the, uh, the new right uh, regrowth in the petri dish. However, in the adult age, the IGF uh, is a growth factor could not uh, promote CRT axon regeneration in the adult stage. As I stated, uh, 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 how that's the question is uh, uh, 
this is the adult colligos neuron reduced response to growth factor, or so in, if less is the case, why not find a way to sensitize the adult neurons response to growth factors, right? So in a, actually in a very last collaboration with Dr. George Sands lab, we found the oxypontin could uh, sensitize adult retinal ganglia cells response to IGF and uh, promote optical nerve axon regeneration in this case. They can have a very similar effect uh, with P10 because the uh, OPN is a oil soluble uh, protein and uh, it's an uh, extracellular protein. It's uh, um, druggable and also the uh, IGF is already uh, applied in many uh, other clinical trials to treat other neurologic disease. So this is a more translatable strategy than P10 deletion. So the, to deal with the second uh, issue, so here actually, uh, as I stated uh, many times this morning, uh, actually this uh, spinal cord injury normally is not completed because the, uh, the injury normally they could not fully cut the spinal cord, right? They were contusion or something happened over there. There are some spared axons. Actually, if we can find a way to let the spread axon to sprout, to rewire the damaged circuit, and uh, maybe we can have found a way to promote a functional recovery. Compare with the regenerating uh, strategy here, maybe the axon have to travel a long distance to the original target to make, it a, fun to make a functional circuit. For example, from the cervical lesion to a lumbar uh, target, it may take years for the regenerating axon to reach the original ta uh, target and uh, make the functional circuit. So, so what uh, uh, suitable model should we have? So if the suitable uh, model should assess the functional contribution from both regeneration and the sprouting. Uh, the second, it must be reproducible. Otherwise, you have high variation. You cannot do anything. And in the lab, because I've, I explored the T10 uh, lateral section model, in this model, all the ex descending axons in the red set is trans produced is transect and uh, leave in the red side for the spread axon to sprout into the denervated uh, side. And uh, with this animal model, we first uh, subject those animal to the uh, spontaneous uh, function recovery test. Uh, and we subject those animal to, for example, the ground walking and also the treadmill walking. We found the uh, one week post injury, the animals have very severe defects featured by the uh, dragging here, and after uh, about uh, 12 weeks, we can see that uh, uh, in terms of the weight support, also the um, uh, handling protection, and also speed tolerance in the treatment mill, they can spontaneously recover to some extent. This is partially recovered, not fully recovered, but they can uh, spontaneously recover some case. However, the poor dragging it's not recovered at all. In this case, we can see that uh, one week is same, yeah, is same as 12 weeks. That means this uh, high limb dragging is, uh, uh, is very, is the uh, most different, uh, difficult uh, aspect to recover. So we then subject those animal to the irregular ladder walking test. In this test, the rocks in the ladder is spaced uh, irregularly. So the animal, when they try to cross the ladder, it have to adjust the every single uh, step to avoid uh, dropping or slip from the rocks. In this particular uh, assay, so we this need the animal skill to uh, mo integrate the motor and the sensory input. This is called a uh, skilled high limb locomotion. So uh, uh, analyze the, the injured high limb to see what happened to those animals. We found again here this animal could not find Re uh, recover this uh, particular aspect. If we can see that from one week and the 12 weeks, it didn't uh, show any difference. So what's the anatomical basis for this observation? And the way analyze the axon terminate of this uh, serotonergic axons and also the CIT axons. One week after uh, injury, we found those both of the serotonergic axons and the corticospinal axons do not have the ability to uh, cross the middle line and uh, innervate the hilum. However, after 12 weeks, we can see the synotonic axons, they have showed a very robust uh, axon crossing the middle line to innovate the injured hilum. 
However, the stay attack can do not have the ability to cross the middle line, which is uh, consistent with our expectation that the stay attack can do not have the ability to uh, sprout uh, automatically without any treatment. So with uh, its animal model and also this outpunting very nice uh, 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 treatment uh, strategy, we try to assess if they can work in the spinal injury model. And here we inject uh, the uh, AAV, IGF, and OP, OPN to both sides of the cortex and let them express the IGF and OPA in the same time. So the cortical neurons can express uh, both uh, uh, proteins. And also the AAV, PLAP, and AAV, OP, and AAV, IGF alone also use uh, to control animals. And uh, we inject, uh, co-inject AAV and cherry to let the cortex to label this uh, intact uh, axons to show, say they are sprouting and also we use another color GLP to label the uh, uh, regenerating axons. So in this case we did uh, one day uh, after injury we gave the drug and uh, the virus injection. So we quickly record animal behavior performance in the double blind manner. I have a collaborator he can do that for me and uh, 10 weeks after injury, we did a histologic uh, analysis and uh, applied the occlusion uh, criteria to eliminate the mice with unsuccessful surgeries. And uh, what I mean su unsuccessful surgery here is uh, uh, if the injury is not completed for, for, the, for the right side, for example, they have some spared axons, we will include the animal from the further analysis. Or the injury is across the middle line and the injury to the intact side, we will also include that animal for further analysis. With these remain animals, we did a statistical analysis and see, and we also have a plan to deposit all our original data into the open data commons for the reference of the people in the other, uh, in the field. And then we do the, this is one example, show that in the control, this uh, uh, region reaction uh, in, the, in the green, we can see here in the control animals, they show that back which they saw previously. However, in this uh, OPN IGF treatment group, we can see that a lot of axon regeneration crossing the uh, lesion site. However, this uh, axon only extends about uh, one millimeter uh, away from the injury site. Within the shroom, they can uh, play a very uh, significant role in the functional recovery. However, we did see a lot of axons cross the middle line into the uh, delivery site. And we can see this pattern more clearly in the crawl section. And we can see the OPN IGF treatment could show a robust uh, axon sprouting into the delivery site. And uh, here in this uh, inside again, we didn't see uh, uh, tremendous uh, axon uh, sprouting in the control animals. So we, after uh, we analyzed all the animals, we found in this growth walking and the treat meal uh, performance, they didn't uh, improve any uh, uh, Anymore with uh, compare with the uh, control animals, they didn't show any significant difference in all of those uh, uh, aspects even after 12 weeks. So we subject those animals into this uh, irregular light walking uh, test again. We found these animals with OPN IGF treatment show significant functional recovery after eight weeks after the injury. We can compare with the control groups. Here we can see that the open IGF treatment can partially restore the skill of the locomotion, but a lot of growth uh, locomotion. So I, I would like to uh, give a, a short summary for the first part of my uh, talk. It will show that the OPN can sensitize the response of adult corticospinal neuron to IGF. And the post initial OPN and IGF treatment led to robust the regrowth of corticospinal axons and the, the OPN IGF treatment partially restored some functional, uh, showed some uh, loss function following the incomplete spinal injury model. Um, did you do anything to look at the time window for the sensitization from osteoponin with respect to the IGF responsivity, or were they always delivered at the same time? Mm, that's a very good question. In the optical love, maybe some, uh, I, I, I don't know that uh, answer yet because in that one, we always give them in simultaneously. If they, if we can give it a later stage, I don't know what happened. We don't know yet. Maybe it's a good strategy to test. Okay. But uh, in this particular experiment, we always give 
<laughs> simultaneously. Uh, yeah, in the same title, we can only see the same title of the virus, but the uh, composition is, yes, the answer is yes. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a very good question. Actually, uh, most of people in the st another particular experiment we did in the optical, we found that those regenerative axons is not uh, managed. That's the problem. So they, w after we gave a drug to uh, improve that transaction, they can improve the functional recovery. But uh, here in the spinal cord, as I stated, the main reason is because they didn't reach their original target. That's the biggest problem. But uh, for the future work, maybe we can promote uh, the remediation of these axons. Further, maybe we can prove a um, uh, more functional recovery. I, we don't know yet for the particular question. In these experiments, you're, you're expressing osteophontin or IDF1 in the cortical spinal neurons. Mm -hmm. If you just deliver those proteins in the spinal cord, do you get the same sort of response? Or do the neurons have to make it? I think it had to be the neuron, not the spinal cord in with axons. Yeah. Uh, because I have another part to talk. If uh, we can go further a little bit and go back to question, otherwise we'll end here. <laughs> it's not a good strategy. <laughs> oh, one more question. One more. Okay. <laughs> um, so, what are the In the lateral hand section, we would like to minimize the scar formation over there because. Uh, is uh, very small actually in our uh, injury model. Right. Very tiny, you can see the injury set is very small compared to the completely crushed injury model. You hear, we want to like, minimize the scar formation here. Yes, in both control and we do the same thing, yeah. Excuse me, I, I think the... Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, is you are asking about uh, the why the axon could not regenerate in the, in the control animals. You mean the crossing from why they crossing? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Actually, we all, our uh, lab is studying one of the hypotheses. Maybe because you know the through proning, they have some uh, bilateral projection. They have the sprouting in the uh, in young age, but in the adult after proning, they disappear. We don't know if they are following the same pathway or they found a new way to go. It's a very good question, and actually we are studying that. We don't know the answer yet. Did I answer your question clearly? <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I can talk with you later on and then maybe can address your question. So as I stated here, we have a very uh, interesting clue that the CRT is mainly responsible for the scale of the locomotion, but not the gross locomotion. So let's, uh, more interesting, what uh, what the cortical neurons do and how they work during the uh, falling movement, because the falling is more relevant to the uh, go direct movement. 
because we have, for example, we reach in food for eating. If we need uh, no varieties and we reach it uh, purposefully. So that's more relevant to the voluntary movement and the skill the mo uh, movement. So the, that question is, uh, what's the function of choreographic in the volume scale the motor control? And uh, actually back to 50 years ago, uh, Dr. Panfis stimulates the cortex of the patient on the brain surgery. He found the stimulated different part of the uh, cortex can evoke different uh, body part movements. And uh, he, this movement is uh, present here in the model homunculus, very famous uh, picture over here. It showed that different uh, stimulation can evoke different body part movements. However, his pioneer study also raised a very uh, interesting question. The how the cortex is uh, organized in control of movement. And uh, a current uh, study uh, by uh, uh, other group showed that the stimulator of the primate uh, cortex, they can evoke different behavior instead of body part movement. For example, stimulate these cortical regions, they can uh, evoke the defense behavior. Evo uh, stimulate where you can uh, evoke the climbing and the uh, leaping uh, behavior and many, many others become evoked uh, by this stimulation. And uh, the question is uh, how such a behavior map in the cortex can be realized at the neural circuit level. But we know that I have a direct pathway as I stated previously the, from the cortex to the spinal cord and control it directly. And uh, that's a play very important role in the uh, voluntary movement as I stated previously. However, there are many other uh, relay pathways. For example, it's an indirect pathway for first uh, the cortical neurons uh, project the axons into the subcortical regions and then cortical regions and relay this uh, uh, singular into the spinal cord. And actually that's a very nice paper published in Nature state that the uh, uh, brain stem nuclear, MDV, is important uh, for the for the reaching task. Actually, they receive uh, input from the cortex. That's the example of the indirect pathway. However, what the cortical neurons do and how they work to, con uh, to control the volume go direct model scale is not clear uh, previously before our study. And uh, here, one with the conventional method, they use the uh, uh, surgical uh, lesion study and also the electrical stimulation study of the cortex. They could not uh, differentiate the cortical spine neurons uh, and the other cortical neurons. They also have the indirect pathway. They could not differentiate the direct pathway and the indirect pathway to style the function uh, specifically. So to overcome this uh, uh, limitation, uh, I in the lab uh, developed uh, the retrograde method to uh, target the cortical spine neurons. And uh, this method is uh, uh, based on the currently developed uh, an antiviral, a uh, short type of antivirus. Uh, it's developed by Dr. Kabayashi's group in uh, Japanese, in Japan. Uh, here we to uh, verify the retrograde efficiency. We inject uh, the uh, anti GLP virus into the uh, spinal cord, cervical spinal cord at the P4 on the ultrasonic image guidance. And uh, then the axons terminate in this uh, uh, cervical spinal cord can uptake the viral particles and uh, lead to the uh, cortical neurons in the cortex to express the GLP. As we can see from these uh, images, we can see that the cortical neuron uh, localized in the conventional pre-motor uh, uh, pre area and also the somatosensory cortices. And, uh, more interesting, a lot of them are localized in the pre motor area. That's normally thinking that is the uh, motor plan area. Actually, we can see that it also have projection directly to the spinal cord. And from the top of down uh, heat map view, we can see there are at least two classes of cortical spinal neurons in the cortex. The first one is in the rostral volume area, it's localized in the pre motor area. And the second one is the caudal uh, volume area. Is covered in the somatosensorine and also primary motor cortices. And uh, our rivet is in these two populations of cortical spine neurons and uh, uh, explore their functional difference. With this high efficient recruitment method, the first question we would like to answer is uh, 
what could happen to the animal if we remove the entire, entire population of corticospinal neurons. And uh, to do this, we first uh, inject uh, lantiflex uh, deferral toxin receptor into the cervical spinal cord. And then this, we, this is uh, injection is to the animal of EMX Cree animals. The Cree is, is, is uh, restricted to depressed in the cortex. So in this way, we can let the uh, cortical spinal neuron specifically express DTR. And uh, after DT treatment, we analyze the uh, spinal cord and we found the cortical spinal axons in this area is uh, uh, disappeared after the uh, TT treatment. And uh, in a control animal, it's, uh, it's fine. So we now we subject those animals without CST to the uh, growth locomotion and the, the walking and also uh, uh, the treadmill we found is a weight support, do not have any uh, problem compared with uh, after or um, after or bef uh, before uh, the TT treatment. And uh, the also the high limb coordination do not have any problem. And the growth strength is also not affected by CST ablation. That means their strength is, uh, is okay. But if they want to grab food, their strength is not a problem. So it's very elegant. I just want to make sure I understand it correctly. So you're telling me you're able to successfully ablate uh, most, if not all, mm -hmm. of the CST neurons. And yes. the basic gait and uh, movements are fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. The movement are fine. It's really cool. It's very cool. And uh, it's, uh, because the previous people also wanted the surgical strategy, they cut the prim uh, in the primate, the CRT tract. However, this surgery may be cut other descending tracts in the brainstem, and uh, they could not get any conclusive uh, uh, result, and also the conclusion is not uh, that, uh, uh, that good. So now we have this uh, very fun method. We can answer this question uh, elegantly. So we. Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. Actually, we in our uh, uh, supportive experiments, so we already uh, uh, assessed the efficiency. We found that it's almost 98% of the neurons we can be targeted by, the, uh, by our method. How do you decide you've gotten all How do you decide the Yeah, that's a, a very good question, actually. In this, because I didn't talk about it here because it's a little bit complicated. You know, we don't have a marker for the cortical spine neuron. The how many cortical neurons over there is unknown. So the, the way we want to verify the efficiency is by first inject the uh, tracer. It's a chemical tracer to randomly uh, target the population of cortical neurons and uh, use that as a reference. Yeah, in the spinal cord, then you can retrograde to target the random population of cortical neurons and uh, use that as a reference. And then we inject our uh, virus again Yeah. It's a pretty radical claim to say I can remove all of the cortical spinal neurons mm -hmm. and walk around and grab cheese. <laughs> I think that's a little bit difficult question. However, we, we do have a, a way to stain the cortical spinal axons. We can see they are all gone. Maybe they damage some of them, or we don't know. That, that's a question. Yes, we don't know yet. Yeah. That's a very good question. On the other hand, in defense of what you're doing, it seems to me that <coughs> you, you clearly have knocked out a heck of a lot and have the behavior. Mm -hmm. And if there's another way to interfere with another component of the circuit and take the behavior away, well, then that becomes that becomes a composition, a right? Argument. Yeah, you, you. But it's a, I think it's an a, argument, so. Yeah, that's a good question. It's a composition. We study some. Uh, actually, we study some uh, attack. 
we found the animal they had composite in some way, but uh, in the skilled locomotion they could not uh, composite at all. I will th talk about it later on. Some uh, maybe they said uh, without CIT made radically radically clear neurons, they can take uh, their cortical spinal axons uh, function. Right? That's what you want to ask. Yeah, that composition is true. Some aspects is true, but in the uh, skilled locomotion we studied uh, in the foot retrieval, we didn't see they can composite. And uh, then we subject those animals into the uh, foot retrieval test. Actually, it's a well characterized uh, uh, behavior test to so assess the volume of voluntary movements. In this uh, particular uh, uh, assay, it can be roughly divided into three, three steps. The first is uh, reaching, and second is graph, and then retrieval is uh, for eating. And uh, you can further be uh, divided into about uh, 10 steps. I would like to name a few of them here in this video. We can say the called aim and uh, advance and the digital extent <laughs> and the pronation and the grasp and then supination and then they release it to the mouse to eat. So I will uh, uh, elaborate this 10-step uh, method to uh, analyze the function of uh, so, so what the question is, what's the role of the cortical spine system during each step of this go direct movement? So we subject those animals to, to this test and double blinding analyze the animal's uh, performance. We found that the CST ablation can significantly reduce the overall success rate in this uh, uh, foot pallet uh, retrieval task. And uh, we can see here is uh, in the uh, in the behavior, they sometimes they can graph it uh, very accurately, and sometimes they miss it. You can see in the sh later on, they will miss. And then they could not uh, uh, target the uh, jug palette correctly. And uh, also they make some mistake by lock off the uh, sug palette. They could not uh, uh, grab it correctly. So then we subject those uh, animals to further uh, analysis by the 10 step method, as I mentioned previously. We found the animal without the CST make uh, more errors in the aim, advance, and uh, pronation, grasping, and supination step, but not other steps. That means the CST mainly responsible for those steps, but not others. The others may control by other circuitries, not instead of CST. Now we have a very nice uh, study in the entire, uh, entire po population remove study. However, uh, we would like to study the uh, distinctive function of this uh, two population of cortical spinal neurons as I mentioned previously. To do this, we use the same retrograde method to let the cortical neurons express free first, and then inject the flex DTR into different regions, and then we can uh, apply the the cortical spinal neuron in different regions. And here we inject the AVGIP and the AV uh, flex RP with this uh, flex DTR virus. Uh, in this way, we can uh, verify the injecting site in a later stage and also do the anatomic study. And we can see from here, we can inject it correctly. If the uh, injection is uh, not in the correct position, we will exclude them from further analysis. And anatomically, we found that after DT treatment in the animal with uh, flex DTR injection, the uh, cortical spine neurons are eliminated after the T DT treatment. And then we subject those animals with our uh, CRT in deep particular uh, regions to the full retrieval test again. We found that both of the animals uh, have a deep functional defect in, the, in terms of the successful rates. However, in those animals with different region ablation have a, a different uh, uh, functional deficit in this 10 step uh, method. For example, here with the CFA cortical spinal neuron ablation, they make more errors in the aim and the advanced step. However, those animals with the RFA cortical spinal neuron ablation, they make more errors in the graft and the supination step. And the overlap uh, uh, step, the pronation is controlled by both RFA and the CFA. Uh, cortical spinal neurons. 
And here we show that the CFA corticosmal neurons play roles in the reaching step, and the IFA corticosmal neurons are more responsible for the growth uh, grasping step, but they have overlapping control of the transitional pronation step. Here we still don't know what happened in the transitional step, but we definitely have shown that this two population of corticosmal neurons have uh, some uh, different function in controlling this uh, for, uh, volume go direct uh, uh, task. And then now we have a rough idea that the uh, corticosmal neurons in different regions play different uh, roles in these different steps. So the question is, uh, what, uh, when they activate, when they, uh, uh, the, when the, uh, when the corticosmal neurons activate during this uh, tensile uh, uh, behavior task? And uh, in collaboration with the Xinjiang in NIH, uh, we um, let, let the uh, corticosmal neuron express the G GCAMP6 first and then mount the militarized uh, microscope into the uh, mouse head. And then the mouse can still move freely to do any uh, behavior performance we want like them to do. And then they can still monitor their uh, axon and uh, neurons activity. Actually, here we image them show that the corticosmal neurons actually get dendrites not the cell body itself because it's too deep from the surface. And in this video, we can see the animal uh, when they're reaching the food pellet, we can see the uh, activity of the cortical neurons uh, through the epigodendric trunk. And we can see clearly they have some response uh, according to this uh, food reaching task. Use a computational method, we sort those uh, corticosmal neurons into different groups. For example, this neuron is more uh, activated in the pre-reaching stage, and then this one is more uh, activated in the pre-grasping uh, time window, and this one is more uh, activated in the post-grasping window. And then we mapped all those cortical neurons into the uh, cortical positions in the cortex, and then we got this map, and we found this uh, cortical spine neuron in the IFA is uh, more activated when the animal prepare to grasp the food pellet. However, the corticosmal neuron in the CFA are more activated in the uh, pre-reaching and the pro, uh, pre uh, post graft uh, time phase. That means this regional corticosmal neuron activity in different uh, tempo phase of the pellet uh, retrieval task, which is consistent with our uh, regional ablation study that uh, different population of cortical neurons are responsible for different styles of this uh, for the retrieval task. Does the uh, You mean the, the as a measure of activity, mm -hmm. I assume it compiles these two broad categories of events. The neuron makes a spike, does not spike. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, we did uh, one experiment to stimulate the axons in the spinal cord and record their response. We found that uh, it's uh, uh, synchronized. We stimulate the axons in the spinal cord. You see a little flash of light mm -hmm. from the calcium indicator. Mm -hmm. Calcium indicator could be going off because the neuron is spiking or because there's synaptic input and the neuron is not spiking or a combination. Uh, I, I understand your, uh, you mean it's, it's, uh, it itself is activated? Neuron, okay. Goes off, goes in the okay. That's your, that's your marker on. Or on the neuron, I fire an extra and it doesn't Or release an intraplatal source, and it makes your marker go off. Mm -hmm. So, the measure of activity compiles mm -hmm. those two possible events together, right? Mm -hmm. You mean if they are firing, if a real uh, 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 firing or lot is I know, you mean it uh, indicator may not uh, indicate the neuron is firing. You mean that way? Maybe they have they receive they input. Mean, yeah, yeah it, we don't know yet if they are input to that. So they make we only know is that we did analog experiments to insert the lens into the uh, cortex, and then we monitor the cell body and axon in the same time. We found that synchronized. 
But uh, if this response is out, uh, is itself is firing or they have received input because they cause them to fire, we don't know. I guess it's, it's the assignment of the temporal pattern of activation of these neurons to movements mm -hmm. that makes the implicit assumption that it's spike because there's no way to work with that signal. I mean, it has to go down to spinal cord. Yes, yes, you have I mean, down to the spinal cord. Okay, so implicitly you're assuming this is a spike. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're assuming that's right. Mm, yeah, that's the question. Yeah, we, 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 we can only do this. Uh, we, well, do. I mean, maybe it only we, we didn't do that. I, I'm sure we didn't. Do. We only know that say, it's a neuron activates. It's not a, uh, from the input, but it's uh, automatically uh, uh, activate. It's by itself. Because, uh, you know, I, I collaborated with Xinjiang. And uh, they are expertise in the cache of image, and I mainly uh, uh, focus on the uh, uh, tracing, uh, pick up the animal. Where does this guy sit in the cell? In the what part? Is it partitioned in some part of the cell? Yeah, it's part of the cell. It's a co-author for this, uh, this person. Yeah, it's okay, I'm, I'm it's a I'm okay I'm because it, uh, they they we collaborate with them, so they maybe know better uh, than me uh, uh, in the particular experiment. Are you, are you making some other in the nerve cell? Some other? In the cell bodies, the soma. Are yeah, yeah, soma. Your yeah. little dots, each of those are a soma that have shown the calcium signal, correct? This is uh, actually the apicodendric trunk. You're doing it on the dendrites. Yes, yes, I, as I stated here, this, you can only image in these steps, but not go further. Actually, the cell body is uh, further down. Actually, we did, uh, as I said, we did uh, the insert lens to monitor the cell body response and also the epigodendrite response. Actually, we see that uh, they are synchronized. So and that's why. part of a dendrite with the cell body is mm -hmm. over here, and you're measuring the dendrite over here. Mm -hmm. You're ascribing its position in two zones to where the cell is, but the cell may be offset by several hundred microns from the apical dendrite. Mm -hmm. measuring the yeah. Maybe you're totally right. Here, actually, we. This actually this is not accurate to the 100 micron. When it's a big cortex, you know, that's the difference. Maybe it didn't count too much. Actually, most of the we can see from here the cell body they ha have direct uh, uh, this kind of uh, dendrite on the top. It's not that far away from the each other. So actually, in this uh, particular scale, it's big. It's a very big uh, distance in in terms of this uh, very. Find uh, a torch or something yeah, like you're that. Saying your maps might even be tighter if you were able to measure the activity mm -hmm. in the cell bodies because of the apical dendrites that spread in layer one. That yes, that's correct. Microns. That's correct. You might actually get a, a better separation. Yes, uh, they are definitely correct. But uh, in these particular experiments, we could not uh, insert the lens into the cortex. Actually, we are going to damage the cortex, so we could not uh, uh, study their function. So we. So in this particular experiment, we could not uh, do that. But uh, in, I know some people try to monitor the SOMA directly. That's more accurate position compared with our method. But in this way, we can, the uh, only thing we can do is like this. Thank you. And then we, we use the image study. We show that the, the different population of cortical neurons are responsible in different uh, step of this food reach over task. And then we like to want to know what the direct motor output of the cortical span neurons. So we saw to stimulate the cortical span neurons directly to see the, what the uh, joint movements relative to the related to this uh, food retrieval task. And uh, in this uh, same uh, method, we can let uh, the cortex express uh, channel resorption specifically. Here is the cell body, and here is the epigodendric. And uh, we do this uh, cortical simulation in the broad cortical uh, regions and the record of what happened uh, to the animal's joint movements. And uh, we can see from this video, when we stimulate the cortical manure in the Ross area, the, it shows the digital and the apple and the show the forward movements. And uh, we will show another trail. It's because it's consistent and uh, you can consistently uh, evoked this type of movement in the rostral area. However, in the uh, cord cordial cortical spinal neuron stimulation, they evoked uh, the 
volume backward movement. They mainly involved uh, the elbow and the shoulder movement, not the digital ones. After we uh, uh, map all of the uh, joint movement in the cortical map, we found that in the rostral area, it's mainly responsible for the digital and the wrist uh, uh, joint movement. However, in the cortical region, it's mainly responsible for the elbow and the shoulder uh, movements, even with a broad uh, distribution. Now we use this uh, uh, simulation uh, study, we show that the respective role uh, uh, of the CFA corticosmal neuron and the IFA corticosmal neuron in this reaching and the grasping stealth. It's uh, pretty consistent with our previous study that showed that the image that it showed that the different uh, uh, activation type pattern in the for the retrieval task. Also, ablation study showed that different uh, cortical neurons and uh, control different steps of, of this for the retrieval task. And uh, we did another control experiment with this uh, uh, layer five cortical neuron stimulation. In this uh, particular uh, SI1 uh, channel resolution YFP mice, they have uh, the layer five cortical neuron press channel resolution. We did the cortical stimulation we found didn't, uh, didn't show that the significant uh, uh, termination pattern in this uh, cortical. And then they mixed together, so we didn't see any uh, clear uh, uh, topographic organization of this uh, cortical, uh, this uh, cortical neurons in the cortex. So uh, we did so many experiments, so uh, the anatomic basis for this distinctive function of the regional specific cortical span neurons. So to, to answer this question, we sought to analyze the uh, 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 axon termination pattern in the uh, cervical spinal cord. To do this, we uh, inject uh, uh, AAVTD tomato in different regions of the cortex and uh, analyze the axon termination pattern in the uh, uh, cervical spinal cord. With, uh, with this image, we can see that the uh, cortical spinal axons from the rostral area uh, terminate uh, more ventrally in the spinal cord. However, the caudal uh, cortical spinal neurons are terminate more in the dorsal part of the spinal cord. More interestingly, in the uh, uh, different le spinal level, we can see this uh, axons from the IFA is uh, terminate uh, even if through C2 to C7. However, this axons from the CFA typically room four is mainly terminated in the upper level, so C4 to C3. Actually, in the conventional textbook, they uh, show that the, these uh, volume muscles are controlled by the different uh, uh, spinal levels. For example, the uh, proctor muscles are mainly uh, controlled by the upper spinal cord. However, the distal muscles are mainly controlled by the lower level. Here we can see that these uh, different uh, muscles in different color of the motor neuron. It traces the muscle and see the motor neuron location. We can see the proximal muscles motor neuron are localized in the upper level. And here these uh, distal muscles are localized in the uh, lower level. So here we show that the CRT axons in the, in from the rostral is mainly terminated in the, in the area of controlling these distal muscles. Actually, we also did some uh, EMG study to confirm that these uh, cortical spinal axons, they have controlling different groups of uh, the uh, muscles. We show that the axons from the rostral area are mainly include in the, uh, uh, the uh, movement of the uh, uh, response of this uh, digital muscle. Uh, however, the axons from the caudal area is mainly uh, engaged in the proximal muscles. So here we show that CRT projection from each cortical region. They show different termination pattern in the cervical spinal cord, and also they engage different uh, population of muscle groups to re realize this uh, muscle control in different uh, in the dorsal, uh, distal, and the vent uh, proximal ones. Here, I would like to uh, give a conclusion here. And uh, we showed from the uh, image study, we showed that CRT are uh, cortical spinal neurons in different regions, activity in different temporal phase of this goal direct model task. And uh, also using the anatomic tracing and the image study, show that the par parallel pathway of CRT terminates 
at different spherical levels of origins and recruit specific muscle growth for individual movements. And also the CRT ablation of optical stimulation study show that CRT control the formally movements in a way that emphasizes more on parallel rather than the hierarchy as the state in the typical uh, textbook. Uh, as a comparison, I would like to make it simple here. In a, just like a word in the dictionary can be re, uh, rearranged to make a sentence. Here in the cortex, the cortical uh, span neurons encode different uh, movement elements, and then this movement element can be reassembled to make a uh, multiple step behavior task. Okay, so what's the next question for this study? The, actually, the ongoing experiment in the lab is try to address the following four specific questions. The first is uh, how to reconstitute the natural behavior by using the patent CST simulation. Hopefully, by this study, we can optimize the uh, simulation protocol for the application of a brain machine interface. The second question is uh, how the cortical spinal activity is regulated by cortical, cortical, or sensory input, as this gentleman asked. If there are any sensory input to control this firing pattern, we don't know yet. That's the question. And another question is uh, how indirect paths will work together with this CRT in motor control. Here we just emphasize on the direct pathway. As they, as they showed by other people, the indirect pathway may control more the raw, uh, raw, uh, um, gross locomotion. The, the here the CRT may be responsible more for the skilled locomotion, but the gross locomotion may be controlled by the uh, indirect pathway. And, uh, and the first question is uh, what step could be recovered by regeneration and uh, composition? Because in the Qigong lab, we mainly focus on the axon regeneration and the optical level regeneration. We want like, to use that to further uh, improve the function recovery of the injury. Now, in, uh, for the, my future direction, I would like to differentiate the, from Qigong lab. And so I move from the cortical spinal neurons into the Ex, uh, neurons uh, in the brainstem who send direct axons into the spinal cord. I will talk about this uh, part of my uh, future plan. So uh, for the short term goal, I would like to study the axon regeneration and the functional recovery of the radical spinal axons derived from the brainstem in the same T10 natural hemisection model. And the uh, M1 could be what type of the radical spinal axons could support spontaneous uh, uh, functional recovery. And uh, also, they can uh, spawn, sprout, some of the axons can sprout spontaneously. So, what type of radical axons could be induced sprout with the mTOR based treatment is the second question. And the third aim is what are the behavior outcomes by increased uh, radical spinal axon sprouting? And in the middle term goal, I try to develop a combination of strategy of promoting axon regeneration and a functional recovery of a completely uh, spinal injury model. And in a long time ago, I would like to take a, a advantage of my chemistry background to develop a non-viral deliver system to treat spinal cord injury or stroke. For the first aim, what type of radical track axons could uh, uh, sprout spontaneously? Actually, in my, uh, in my pilot experiments, I usually use the same model to cut the left side of the uh, spinal cord. We can trace the um, axons from the brainstem we can see uh, what, 10 days after the injury, there's not too many axons cross from the injury site into the innervated in site. Uh, here, uh, however, after 10 weeks, we can see a lot of axons. They can cross the middle line and uh, into the innervated site in this uh, 10 weeks. That's, this data show that the cortical, uh, radical spinal axons do have the spontaneous uh, sprouting uh, ability. So how to analyze the uh, cortical spinal neuron, uh, radical spinal neuron in the brain stem? I will try to use the uh, same antiviral uh, retrograde method to trace uh, these uh, radical neurons uh, in the brain stem and see what, uh, what they are and uh, where they locate. And in this way, we can uh, further uh, do this uh, functional test. As I showed previously, they do have some spontaneous function recovery. But uh, what the function recovery can be removed if we remove this spontaneous uh, uh, sprouting cortical uh, radical spinal axons. 
to do this, we can uh, inject uh, lanticree into the, this uh, sprouting axon, let the neuron express uh, DTR, and uh, then we uh, use DT to remove them to see what a functional uh, outcome will be, what a kind of a functional aspect can be removed by this uh, uh, neuron ablation study. And the second level aim is what type of radical spinal axon could be induced to sprout with uh, mTOR-based treatment. So this, this, for this particular experiment, I would continue to use the OP and uh, for the uh, treatment to this, uh, or other group factors can work to test that it can work to radical spinal axon sprouting or regeneration. Actually, in my pilot experiments, I did uh, uh, the injection of anti GLP virus into the T10 completely crush injury site. In this way, the axon is damaged, so it can uptake those uh, virus more efficiently. And uh, analysis these uh, neurons in the uh, uh, brainstem. We can see there are at least uh, two clusters over here. And uh, we can see these uh, rostral radical spinal neurons. These, some of them of the, are with PI6 uh, uh, expressing. That means then after injury, the PI6 uh, level didn't downregulate, which is indicated with mTOR activation. However, the caudal neurons uh, in this part or area is uh, PI6 is downregulated. You can see some PI6 level uh, expressing, but a lot in the, uh, in the GFD portable neurons. That means the neurons in the brain stem is uh, heterogeneous. They have a different uh, response to the, maybe different response to the op, uh, op igf treatment because they are working on the mTOR pathway. Maybe in this one, it's not responsible for this uh, op igf treatment. However, those neurons may have the ability to regenerate with the uh, uh, op and igf treatment. In my another pilot experiments, I inject uh, this uh, with uh, the CRE into the pitin flux mice in the brain stem, I did see this, some of the axons, of radical spinal axons can regrow after T10 completely crush. As we can see, this uh, axons cross the interface more clearly in the enlarged uh, image. So now we have already have some clue that uh, mTOR pathway activity, the mTOR pathway did can did uh, uh, something for this radical spinal axon regeneration. Hopefully, the open IGF treatment can work in this aspect. And then the M3 is what's the behavior outcome by increased uh, radical spinal axon sprouting? Is uh, we will use this method if we see more axon sprouting. So what are the functional outcome of those animals? Possibly they can uh, 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 gain some function in this tracking. Maybe they can recover better with this open IGF treatment in directly into the brainstem. Uh, another is uh, also other parameters we can uh, take a look. So in this here, we can do the same thing to remove this, uh, 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 this re regenerating axons or sprouting axons. Again, to see what a functional deficit will be the animal and remove that. And this is called a loss of function uh, uh, study. And as I mentioned previously, there are at least two clusters of cortical, uh, radical spinal neurons in the brain stem. So what's their, their function, right? What, what's the function of the rostral ones? What's the function of the caudal ones? So as I said previously, in a study in the uh, 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 cortical spinal neurons, there are two clusters we can use this way to ablate them specifically and stimulate them specifically. Or in this way, we cannot image that because if we insert a lens into the brain stem, the animal will die. So we are not able to do that in this particular experiment. But we can do, can it, can do the ablation or stimulation uh, study. In the long, uh, in the midterm goals here, as we know that uh, completely injury in the patients, uh, they have, a, they will have a big cavity in the spinal cord, and uh, also in this, uh, in this uh, mouse model of the complete crush, there's a gap here. Big but there are some cells in it. It's a fibroblast or uh, scar uh, form, form in this niche uh, uh, site. So they or inhibit any axon to try to cross it. So in this particular uh, uh, pilot experiments, 
I learned this uh, cell translation technique from uh, Dr. Mark Twensiglev, use the uh, E12.5 spinal cord progenitor cells to transplant it to the complete the injury side of the spinal cord. Uh, and we can see the cell can uh, survive well in the injury side, and they can extend a lot of axons into the uh, very long distance into the uh, spinal cord, the host spinal cord. However, when we analyze the uh, CRT from uh, the cortex using the BDA tracing, we found all those CRT axons, they stop before the injury, and no axon can spontaneously regenerate into the lesion site. Hello, Dr. Mark Twensky-Lab, they show that the CST do have some spontaneous axon regeneration ability into the upper uh, level, for example, the cervical level. However, they also prove that the, the CRT axon could not regenerate into the uh, cervical, uh, into the thoracic injury site. So that's uh, consistent with my study. And uh, with the P10, at uh, the P10 lab, we do this P10 deletion of the cortical spinal neurons and allow this cortical spinal axon to regenerate. And a lot of the axons, they can uh, enter the graph, and some of them can pass it. So hopefully, those uh, radical uh, uh, cortical spinal axons can make synapse with the graft neurons. And the graft neurons can extend long distance axons into the uh, so for example, here the lumbar uh, level, they can make, they can relay the upstream singular into the caudal part, and um, hopefully it can be functional. However, on my hand right now, I didn't see any functional improvement. That's the question we want to study in the future. Hopefully, we can use the behavior training method to let the animal uh, to uh, train into some aspects to re to stress the connections. And, the, and some of them may have a functional recovery. Also, that's another way to use the thread, it's called a chemical training, to let the these graft neurons to activate, and also the host uh, axon to be activated, and uh, re uh, restrains their uh, functional uh, connection. And uh, in the end, hopefully, they can achieve some functional recovery in the end. And uh, for a long time ago, the, the said uh, I did a lot of chemistry work, I uh, published Few paper in this developing this uh, delivery system, also synthesized work. So hopefully, I can develop a non viral delivery system to treat spinal cord injury or stroke to make it more uh, translatable. So in the end, I would like to thank my uh, PI, Dr. Tsigan He, in the in the Boston Children's Hospital, and also my collaborator in the lab. Is uh, Kevin, Jason, and uh, also many of them, they helped me a lot during this study. Also, my collaborators in the NIH is the Kwong, Wang, and Xin uh, Li, who uh, helped me did the image work, and also Chief Gerben helped me a lot in the anatomic analysis. And I uh, also would like to thank the funding resource to support my uh, research. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. Very much. Uh, time for a couple questions. Yep, Tyler. Well, you seem to not do any detection, just uh, have osteoconteal and idea of one in the normal mind. Mm -hmm. Can you simply do the sprouting? Uh, we, we show here, even with the injuries uh, uh, condition, they could not sprout. So in the normal condition, we already tried that, it's not uh, going to sprout. Yeah, it cannot uh, improve the Is sprouting. They know because uh, that one can only support the neuron survival, but not the sprouting. It's approved by other labs. The reticular is the BDA axons, uh, labeled axon from the cortex, the, the cortical spinal axons. Is the uh, GIP positive graft uh, cells? Uh, it's the uh, E twelve point five progenitor cells. The spinal we uh, we dissected it out from the embryonic uh, uh, mice. It have a GIP in it, so we have the GIP. Uh, you mean they say this one is uh, like a cavity over there? Yes. 
Yes, they say not the not the homogeneous in this uh, injury side. Okay, In this particular area, I'm not sure, but uh, it, it did uh, this kind of neuron. They can differentiate into a glia and a neuron and many other ways. That uh, my analog direction is to control the uh, rough cells to differentiate to the way we want. Maybe there are also some uh, uh, cr uh, scar from the host tissues, but uh, we don't know yet. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, we we stained the JAP AP and we found most of them they have a homogeneous JAP AP uh, positive uh, tissue over there. So then that there must be some clear over there, but uh, it's, it's uh, uh, you know the JAP AP is everywhere in the spinal cord, but uh, that uh, density in that uh, particular injury site is not uh, increased compared with the host uh, tissues. Right. We did some of the uh, okay. study over there. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. I think what, what was really striking is the, is the deletion of the CST mm -hmm. and, and no motor defect, right? And, and the CST is in a different spot in mice than humans, mm -hmm. but has anyone ever just gone in and used a lesion in the dorsal column and lesion the CST of mice? It would kind of answer the question that Reed has, mm -hmm. a very different approach, classical approach. Just cut the... We can do the pyramidotomy. The pyramidotomy, the axon... They didn't show the, uh, uh, if they cut it correctly, they didn't show the uh, functional deficit in the growth of function. We, can, we did that a lot yeah. previously. So what about the posterior limb of the internal capsule? What's your question? Last, Sorry? Last, 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 the last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we'll talk more tomorrow when we talk about it. Look at the peak time knockout and we see which of the many neurons that are affected having a following the infection of the spinal cord. Which of those have the ability to grow through the top? And it's mm -hmm. partially penetrant, so that means that there's some subset of neurons in the peak time knockout that have that pattern to reach an end. Why not take that route? Or is that something that your lab is interested in? I, I think uh, you're a very good question. Actually, in the spinal cord, it's a little bit difficult to differentiate of the regeneration. Actually, the, the axon you can see here is a lot, but actually, you want to re treat uh, those uh, regenerative axons, it's very hard to treat it back to the neuron. It's almost impossible because there are very few of them over there. And uh, then in the eye, we did see that the pitent deletion only promotes alpha cell uh, regeneration, but not other cell type. A very good question to see if we can see what neuron is the regeneration and what one is not responsible for the P10. It must be something over there, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't know yet. So most of the work in Qigong lab is focused on the optical lobe. They could not, they want to know what subtype of the retinal ganglia cells can responsible for P10, which one cannot. Actually, they found alpha cells is the one, but the cortex there are so many <laughs> we have top tab that we don't know maybe 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 you can yeah yes yes possible it's just a yeah 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 maybe in the regenerating ones because the lumbar is limited maybe the sprouting one is more interesting to easy to treat her because that one uh, actually uh, experiment that we are doing in the lab they try to figure out what uh, neuron is responsible for P10 uh, for the sprouting part. If we want to figure out the mechanism of the sprouting. Uh, so one of the people ask you, if they uh, regen recross in the middle line through the, uh, some particular pathway or not, we don't, we don't know yet. So that question is very interesting to know, actually. Thank you, Dr. Walker. Thank you so much. <laughs>